Lifting belts are tools used by many lifters and athletes in the gym to improve their performance on compound movements such as squats, deadlifts, cleans, snatches, and various other exercises. However, there's a commonly held belief that using a lifting belt while training is going to result in core weakness because it takes over some of the core stability or spinal stability demands that the core musculature would usually have while lifting without a belt. So in today's video, we're going to actually tackle the question of if using a lifting belt will make your core weak or not. Whenever we're lifting heavy loads, we have to brace our core sufficiently to increase something called intra-abdominal pressure. Intra-abdominal pressure is basically the amount of pressure within our abdominal cavity, and the more we brace our core, the more we raise the intra-abdominal pressure, and the more we can stiffen our lumbar spine or our core. What this increased stiffness does is it improves the force transfer from our lower body to our upper body, thereby improving our efficiency with movements like squats and deadlifts. A study demonstrating this is one by Harmon and colleagues that had nine lifters deadlift 90% of their one rep max while staying on a force platform, both with a belt and without a belt. What they found is that various measures of intra-abdominal pressure were all significantly greater when lifting with a belt compared to lifting without a belt. Now, not everybody is going to perform better when lifting with a belt. Being able to brace and lift effectively with a belt is a skill that takes time to develop, and depending upon your own body proportions, the discomfort from the belt might actually limit your performance. However, in the vast majority of cases, lifting with a belt is going to result in improved performance in a number of measures that we can see in the gym. Typically speaking, a belt will allow us to lift about 5-15% to more absolute weight, we can lift any given weight with more speed, and we can also perform more reps to failure at any given weight. To assess the demands on the core musculature both with and without a belt, many studies utilize surface EMG data. This is basically a process where you are hooked up to several different electrodes that are placed on your skin over the target muscles, and they measure the overall electrical activity of those target muscles during exercise. So let's actually look at some of the EMG data as it pertains to core muscle activity in lifting both with and without a belt. When looking at the EMG activity of the spinal erectors, there is mixed data when looking at the available research. One study showed that there was an approximately 17% increase in EMG data of the spinal erectors when performing a back dominant lifting movement, however this was in untrained subjects. On the other hand, another study that looked at 14 healthy subjects squatting 90% of their one rep max found that there was no significant difference between lifting with a belt and without a belt when it comes to lumbar paraspinal activity. And on the other hand, another study found that there was a small decrease in spinal erector activity when squatting 90% loads in trained lifters when lifting with a belt compared to without a belt. However, this decrease was relatively small and likely of no actual consequence when it comes to lifting performance. So all in all, there is likely a small increase in spinal erector activity for untrained lifters and no real meaningful difference in trained lifters when lifting heavy loads. Two other muscle groups that are commonly investigated in this type of research are the rectus abdominis, or the six-pack, and the external obliques. One study assessed 13 D1 football players lifting 12 rep max loads and found that there was a small but statistically significant increase in rectus abdominis activity and a small but statistically significant decrease in external oblique activity. However, the same study by Zink and colleagues that showed there was no difference in spinal erector activity found that there was no difference in external oblique activity when lifting belted versus unbelted. So when it comes to actual abdominal muscular activity, it seems like there might be a small increase in rectus abdominis activity and either no difference or a small decrease in external oblique activity. However, there are a couple of limitations that we need to discuss when it comes to these types of studies and the findings associated with core activity in lifting with a belt versus without a belt. The first limitation is that EMG data are simply measurements of the electrical activity of the muscles themselves and not direct measures of force output of that muscle group. While EMG measurements and force output are better correlated with isometric activities such as bracing your core, this is not a perfect relationship. Because of this, we can't directly take data showing more or less EMG measurements and extrapolate that to say that there is for certain more or less muscular force or muscle activity happening. Secondly, some of these studies have these subjects lifting the same absolute weight when belted versus unbelted. This can skew the results and show decreased EMG activity when lifting in a belted condition because lifting with the belt is going to increase the maximum weight that you can lift, meaning that lifting the same weight when you're unbelted is going to feel easier and more efficient to perform. All in all, it's highly unlikely that lifting with the belt is going to result in core weakness as the only thing that really can weaken a muscle group is not utilizing that muscle and not training it. Wearing a lifting belt and using a lifting belt are not passive things and you have to actively brace your core musculature to lift efficiently even when using the belt so you are still absolutely training those muscle groups effectively while lifting. 
And even if we're gonna put a lot more stock in the EMG data than we should, the differences are so small and so varied between different research studies that we can't say for any level of certainty that they would have any big impact on performance outcomes or on long-term strength gains and strength adaptations of the core muscles over time. If you found this information helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel for more content like this in the future, and leave any questions you have below in the comments so that we can answer them for you.